The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on protecting Scotland's livestock. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. There sh should therefore be no interruptions or interventions. I would encourage members who wish to speak or ask questions, in fact, to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Fergus Ewing. Uh, Presiding officer, those of us who were in Parliament in 2001 will probably never forget the devastating impact of the foot and mouth outbreak that year. It engulfed Dumfries and Galloway and the borders and significantly affected rural communities all across Scotland. That outbreak had a profound human impact. It ended generations of farming by some families. It haunted communities. It left fields bare and barren. There was a significant economic cost too, over eight billion pounds UK-wide, according to the National Audit Office. All of these costs are ones which we should do all that we can to avoid repeating. The 2001 foot and mouth disease outbreak taught us lessons about how to better protect the health of Scotland's livestock. We have not suffered such a debilitating outbreak of notifiable disease since. But that cannot and should not make us complacent. We must have in place the best possible measures to minimise risks to the health of our livestock. That is why, presiding officer, that from the 1st of January 2017, the system known as CTS Links is being replaced by Scott Moves to record cattle movement data in Scotland. I previously announced this in response to a parliamentary question on the 22nd of September. I now want to provide more detail for members on why we are making this change and what it involves. First, we must do all that we can to protect Scotland's livestock from the threat of notifiable disease. That requires ready access to accurate information for all cattle movements. Second, we must be able to control any outbreak of exotic disease effectively and efficiently. Again, the ability to trace animals between locations is a key. Such data enables us to deploy our resources to where they are needed. It also allows a proportionate approach to be taken to restricting movements and thereafter to lifting those restrictions. The longer it takes to trace livestock, movements and disease, the greater that an outbreak spreads. The CTS link system has served Scottish keepers well, but it had deficiencies. It only required the location and movements of animals between linked holdings, for example, a number of farms owned by the same family, to be recorded in the on-farm holding register and not reported centrally. The system only required cattle movements between non-linked holdings to be reported to a central database. In recent years, the use of CTS links has been common practice. There are now 3,000 cattle holdings sharing 7,000 CTS links. This means we lack information about the movements of an increasing number of Scotland's cattle. Yet, this is information which farmers and the public would rightly expect government to have available in the event of a disease outbreak. The third reason to change the system is that there is no legal provision for the use of CTS links in European legislation. Their continued use poses a risk of disallowance to the Scottish Government of around £2.5 million initially and over £800,000 per annum thereafter. Moreover, CTS links is a 20th century process when what we need is a 21st century system which best utilises technology and is more efficient for farm businesses to use. Currently, farmers and crofters are required and expected to keep manual records. Cattle tag numbers must be uh, written and rewritten to keep records up to date. It is a burden on farm businesses' time and resources. The Scott Move system addresses all these issues. It's a further development of the well-proven database hosted by Scott EID which already has robust traceability systems in place for BVD control. Scott Moves enables livestock keepers to centrally record all cattle movements within their business. Eventually, all cattle, indeed all three major livestock species, will be traceable on the same database. This data will enhance our capacity to respond to a disease outbreak or other emergency. 
Scott Moves will also allow information to be shared along the supply chain to the benefit of farm businesses, from farms to abattoirs and consumers, and from abattoirs and markets back to farms. Moreover, moving from a paper-based to an online system means that it's more efficient and effective in the longer term. That development will also contribute to our ambitions for efficient public services through enhanced digital delivery. In this context, Scott Moves is a good system, enabling regulatory requirements to be met, whilst also potentially adding value to all parts of the supply chain. Presiding officer, I want to reassure members that the development of Scott Moves has been informed by the views and the experiences of the livestock sector and is supported by key stakeholders and industry leaders. The switch from CTS links to Scott Moves does not mean substantive additional workload for most farmers. Cattle keepers will record the same information as they do now, but in a different way so that it is available centrally. And the Scott Move system has been designed flexibly to allow for business development and change. Locally and nationally in Scotland, we will be able to analyse changes in the way that individual businesses operate, the land they use, the leases they take, the acquisitions they make, and the diversity of their activities. I want to reassure those in the sector concerned about cross-compliance. To ease the changeover from the old CTS link system, I already announced in September that we are taking a soft landing approach during 2017 to encourage farmers to use the new system. But I also want to be clear that this new system is needed and will be beneficial to Scotland's reputation for quality meat. The Scott Move system recognises the economic value in a livestock and farming business as well as its location. The livestock sector is an integral part of Scotland's rural economy. Farm output of cattle, sheep and pigs is worth uh, 1,100 million pounds to the Scottish economy and the poultry sector crossed to 170 million pounds. We have built an international reputation for quality and excellence which adds significant value to the rural economy and we must do all that we can both to protect and also to enhance that reputation. The Scott EID system provides for accurate provenance and tracing which are key to the quality assured Scotch brands which apply to beef, lamb, and pork. If we were to follow the system being rolled out in England, we would have different holding sizes for cattle compared to sheep and pigs, which would add unnecessary complexity. Presenting officer, the shift from the CTS system to Scott Moves, which takes place on the 1st of January, is about changing from an outdated local recording system to a modern national system which harnesses technology and is sufficiently flexible to grow with businesses as they adapt, innovate and develop. Fundamentally, it's about creating a 21st century national traceability system covering all cattle to better protect the health of Scotland's livestock against the risk of disease. That traceability will give us the tools that we need to effectively control an outbreak of a notifiable disease and will also help to maintain and enhance confidence in the provenance of our livestock and of our quality meat. And that helps protect livelihoods businesses, communities and jobs in Scotland's rural economy. Presiding officer, for all of these reasons, the shift to Scott Moves is the right move to make. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on his statement. Uh, members who have not already done so may press their request to speak buttons now. And I intend to allow around, well, 20 minutes until decision time, in fact. Um, I call on Peter Chapman first. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Once again, I refer members to my register of interest relating to farming. I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Back in September, when I raised the issue of the new cattle tracing system with him, he was incredibly dismissive of NFUS concerns, saying that reported concerns were, and I quote, unspecified. If the Cabinet Secretary had been properly engaging with NFUS and farmers' worries, he would know that reporting movements in a 48-hour window will be challenging. Why won't his plan take into account normal working hours? He surely can't expect farmers to be tied up in paperwork all weekend, trying to keep up to date with his government's new IT systems. He must surely re realise with just a few minor tweaks 
to the rules. The move to this new scheme can be much more manageable for farmers, therefore increasing compliance and massively reducing the risk of heavy-handed and disproportionate penalties for farmers. So I say to the Cabinet Secretary, why can't he extend Scott Moves reporting window to three days and bring it into line with the cattle tracing system rules? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, first of all, um, the, the premise that Mr Chapman makes that, that I haven't engaged with the NFU is just quite simply wrong. Um, it's false in fact, and the record shows that, and I'm happy to share details of the meetings that I've had. As it happens, I'm meeting with the NFU tomorrow as well, uh, after the Parliament uh, closes, as it happens. So I do take exception to assertions which are just false. And I really wonder whether that serves anybody's cause in this place. Uh, moreover, um, I mean, if Mr Chapman had really studied this, he would have ascertained that on the working group that we had to look at this issue, this very serious issue indeed, about how we prevent the huge spread of a disease, a disease which we saw in 2001 decimated the rural community, that the NFU were on the working group and they supported the business case. Now, yes, they, they had... They had some concerns about the timing of things, but he didn't mention that they were on the working group. Would it not have served his cause not to portray a selective version of the facts? I, I think cannot. Why are you only allowing keepers 48 hours to notify moves when Scott EID have four weeks to register additional holdings? Well, the Scott EID, of, EID office are, presiding officer, processing most applications for additional holdings registration within a day or two. It's only those that are more complicated, and some are extremely complicated. Some, particularly some farms that have multi-linked holdings are extremely complicated, and they take more than a few days. And I think the last point that he raised, I'm trying to answer all the points that he raised in between the snidery, uh, was about penalties. And he didn't mention that uh, we, we have made clear, and he knows this, that we have said that we want there to be a soft landing. In fact, I read it out in my statement again, so that uh, for initial breaches, farmers will not be penalised. The purpose is not to punish anybody. The purpose, presiding officer, is to implement a system where if there is a, an outbreak of a dreadful disease, we know where hundreds of thousands of cattle are. The current system, I'm afraid, does not give us that security, as well as being legally required as well as being necessary to avoid disallowance, uh, we uh, need to, protect, to provide a system in this country where we act on the advice of the chief veterinary officer, not poo-poo it, disregard it, and make snide comments of that sort. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, given the Scottish Government's track record on IT systems, can I ask if they have tested this system to make sure it's fit for purpose? Is the Cabinet Secretary confident that the system will work properly? He'll also be aware that large parts of rural Scotland impacted by the new system do not have access to broadband. How can farmers who can't access broadband, or indeed whose broadband systems are down, report movements in good time? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, well, you know, again, Rhoda Grant does raise some practical and sensible questions, and uh, obviously that is one of the, the first matters I raised when in the early days of discussion of these issues, and we are confident that because the system already works uh, in other respects, that it will be made to work in this respect too. And the developments and delivery costs, incidentally, are relatively modest at £125,000, including VAT. They have been delivered on time and within budget, Signing officer, precisely to satisfy myself of this, I took the opportunity uh, in the last week to see for myself how the system works at a, a demonstration at Sochton. Uh, it is not providing the requirement of any additional burden on cattle holders. Uh, it uh, simply requires information to be recorded in such a way as we know where those cattle are and we have that information in the event of an outbreak so that we know where to send veterinary inspectors. At the moment, we do not know that. That means that veterinary officers would have to go to every holding, every holding throughout the country where there are linked holdings, uh, inspect cattle in every single holding, wasting their time, spreading the risk of disease. And that seems to be what some conservatives are advocating 
If so, I think that is the height of irresponsibility. Lastly, a, in relation to the impact on crofters, which uh, I know is something that's dear to Rhoda Grant's heart, there is no change to the well-established rules around the movement of livestock in crofting townships and cattle moving between the croft and common grazing do not need to be recorded on Scott Moves and the township will be considered to be a single epidemiological unit. And I think it's helpful to get that into the record for those constituents of hers uh, and some of mine as Inverness as a crofting county that may be interested in that. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Finlay Cars. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I very much welcome the uh, re-announcement confirmation uh, of the soft landing approach of the transition from the CTS uh, link system to Scott Moves. Given that the purpose of the soft landing is to encourage uh, uh, the take-up of the new system by farmers, uh, can the Cabinet Secretary advise of what other steps are going to be taken to smooth the path and encourage uh, early and meaningful engagement in the Scott Moves system for this important part of our uh, farming infrastructure? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, uh, the, there are several methods that we've uh, adopted to do that. I mean, first of all, part of the purpose of having this statement is to draw attention to the, the importance of taking steps to ensure uh, that in the event of any other ex exotic disease uh, uh, outbreaking in Scotland, that we have the most robust resilience systems available, and we simply do not have them available at the moment. I mean, we require to do this under EU law, and we're still in the EU, uh, and therefore we have to abide, abide by the law. But actually, the most compelling reason is that we need to do this for common sense grounds based on expert advice. So it's important that we communicate this because it does come into effect on the 1st of January, something that did concern me, presiding officer, because that's not a day when people will generally be at work, but farmers have to work 365 days a year. Uh, so, you know, we recognize that we've had a, a hotline available on the 1st of January at my specific request. We have also taken steps to publicize this matter through a, the specialized press and the general press, and we will continue to do so and plainly, we rely heavily as well on the excellent officials that we have in our ARPID offices, I think 17 offices throughout the country, the majority of which I visited. And they, of course, are, will be extremely helpful, as will other experts in the Huntley office in particular, in providing all advice and support and backup, especially in the early days of implementation of the new systems. And finally, it will be possible for those not on the internet, and I think I failed to answer this question for Rhoda Grant inadvertently, to intimate information by paper, by post, by first class post, by fax, or by telephone. So we want to be flexible. We want to introduce this effectively. We do not wish to have a punitive regime. Uh, and uh, I think this event today in Parliament will help us communicate effectively uh, our purpose, the necessity of it, and how it is not something to be feared, uh, but something uh, to be uh, embraced and supported. Finlay Carson to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, Presiding Officer. As an ex-farmer and businessman from Dumfries and Galloway, directly affected by foot and mouth, myself and my colleagues all welcome workable, measured and appropriate intervention to avoid outbreaks like foot and mouth happening again. However, this government has an appalling record on delivering working IT systems for Scotland's farmers. So the Cabinet Secretary will understand my concerns and that of the NFUS with regards to the relationship between the CTS system and Scots Move. So on the record, will the Cabinet Secretary agree to protect farmers from being penalised by IT foul-ups by only opening the time frame on registering moves once the allocation from CTS to Scott Moves has happened? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I've, I've said that throughout uh, 2017, the soft landing approach will be applied, and that, that is what will therefore happen. And that will allow more than sufficient time, I think, uh, for any initial teething difficulties or others to be navigated successfully for communication of the scheme uh, to be 
uh, provided. And, you know, we, we have, uh, I mean, reference has been made to the NFU, and they did support the, the, ba the basic uh, uh, argument of the need for this. And I'm pleased that Mr. Carson says that he, represent, he recognises the need for it before going on to the, the more sort of characteristic uh, uh, tale of woe that we hear from the Conservatives uh, day and daily. But, you know, he mentioned the NFU, and when they saw this map, which shows the linked holdings and the movements of cattle all across Scotland and the obvious risks of what happens if there is an outbreak and you do not know where those cattle are, then you don't really need to be an expert in epidemiology, a chief veterinary officer to see that at the moment there are hundreds of thousands of cattle that we do not know where they are. And therefore, I have no hesitation in the role I have as the Cabinet Secretary responsible in accepting that advice, in supporting the NFU who recognise the need for this introduction, and making this statement as part of a, of a responsible method of ensuring that the need for this scheme uh, and the way it operates is effectively and clearly promulgated to all concerned. Claudia Beamish to be followed by Richard Lyle. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary has sought to reassure those in the sector concerned about cross-compliance. In his statement, the Cabinet Secretary states, to ease the changeover, I, I already announced in September that we are taking a soft landing approach during 2017 to encourage farmers to use the new system. Can the Cabinet Secretary tell the Chamber if there will be a proportionate system of penalties after the first year and give a bit more detail about the support that farmers will get in the changeover process, please? The Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, obviously, cross-compliance is, is the term used, as the member will know, to refer to a series of statutory mani management requirements and standards covering the environment, public, animal and plant health and animal welfare. And farmers must adhere to these in order to receive direct subsidies. So the cross-compliance is, is necessary for farmers to qualify to do so. They must comply with, with these rules. And that, that, I think, is respected and understood. Uh, and the, the purpose of the soft landing, I think, as the member has supported, uh, is to make sure that we don't have a penal regime being introduced in, uh, when farmers are getting used to this new system. And I think a year is a reasonable time to expect that that, that should uh, that take place. Um, where it is determined that a farmer has breached cross-compliance requirements, a reduction to direct payments of 3% is expected for negligent breaches, this reduction can be varied up to 5% and down to 1%. However, as stated, to encourage Scottish cattle keepers to use Scott Moves, negligent first-time breaches notifications and of notifications or recording requirements will result in a written warning rather than a financial reduction to a farmer's direct subsidy. And this procedure will be in place for the whole of the next calendar year. Richard Lyle to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you, President Officer. As a member of the Rural Affairs and Connectivity Committee, I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's statement. Will the Cabinet Secretary commit to reviewing the rules on standstill, which currently require livestock holders to hold animals on their land for 13 days before they can move them off again as part of the shift to the Scott Moods system? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, the, the Chief Veterinary Officer has already agreed that this would be a valuable exercise uh, for the reason that the data coming forward from the new Scott Move system over the next year will be of considerable value in reviewing the standstill regime. So that is one of the potential benefits that this new regime may have. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced copy of the statement. Um, we certainly welcome the digitisation of public services, although I think it perhaps been a bit more of a bumpy ride than a soft landing so far in terms of the cap payments issue. Um, but when the uh, Cabinet Secretary went to Sockton House, you would have no doubt spent some time banging 12-digit codes into a computer, and you'll recognise that it, the capacity for error within that is fairly large. So can I ask you, in terms of the, uh, the penalties that will, that will apply uh, and the kind of negligent first-time penalties that may apply. What kind of support and advisory work will be, will be undertaken with the farming community to ensure that those kind of technical issues are resolved? Cabinet Secretary. 
Um, well, I, I mean, I think Mr. Roscoe makes a, a fair and a kind of practical point, and he's right. When I saw the demonstration of the system, one sees that you know, every animal has its own uh, reference number, and that's, I, th I think, 12, uh, 12 characters. So, you know, plainly accuracy is essential. But, I mean, I would make the point that this is not new. This is something that's understood and appreciated by those who hold cattle. It's not, uh, th there's no, nothing new about the use of those identifiers in respect of the administration of the applications, the IAX forms and the SAF forms and so on and so forth. This is, this is familiar territory. And actually the operation of the system, as I saw from the demonstration, is, is, is really pretty straightforward in a practical terms, provided one has digital capacity. And I've already said that for those that don't, and wrote a grant quite rightly and fairly made this point, there are going to be alternatives available. The second part of his point is what about inadvertent errors? Well, there is as I understand it, and I'm just speaking from memory here, presiding officer, if, if I subsequently ascertain that this is wrong, uh, I will correct the record. But um, the, I mentioned earlier that there is a disallowance for negligent errors. There is separate provision in the EU penalty regime for mistakes made which are of an inadvertent nature, uh, and that uh, where a mistake is of an inadvertent nature, then it is possible for a less penal, a more proportionate less harsh and oppressive result to ensue. And that is something I very much welcome, as I think he does, as indeed does Commissioner Hogan, who has used a lot of his time and effort as Commissioner to explore this issue and take it in the direction uh, that the member and myself, and I think every other member would wish to see. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Mary Evans. Can I thank the Minister for an advanced copy of his statement? Now, the Minister highlighted the foot and mouth outbreak of 2001, and which of course started across the border in England, and he is right to ensure that the risks of such devastating outbreaks are minimised. Under Scott Move Scotland will now have a different system of cattle movement management and operates in England. Does the Minister really think that this is helpful in achieving his aim of minimising risk, especially when NFU Scotland specifically asked him that a similar system to that proposed in England be introduced by him here in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a very fair question that Mr. Rumbles asks, and he is right that the system is, is different in England. The proposal to remove CTS links in England and Wales contains complexity and developments that are at odds with accepted policy in Scotland, for example, registration of temporary land associations at field identifier level within 10 miles and use of temporary CPH numbers with no distance limit. The major difference in practice, as I'm sure Mr. Rumbles is aware, is that there's a 10 mile radius as opposed to the current five miles radius in Scotland. The 10 miles radius covers 314 square miles, 81,000 hectares, which is four times the area of the current five miles radius in Scotland. Uh, so there, there are already differences. Scotland has well established five miles CPH rules, which have been in place for many years. I think it's fair to say that these rules are well known both to keepers and officials, and they operate effectively across all livestock species, and they have been subject to EU audit. Therefore, I think it's fair to point out in response to Mr. Rumble's question, that the existing cattle holders are familiar with the already different system uh, existing in Scotland and in Wales. And therefore, there are many practical reasons why the approach that we are taking is, we believe, the right one for Scotland. Mary Evans to be followed by John Scott. I would ask members to keep the conversations to a minimum until after decision time. Mary Evans. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned in his statement one of the reasons why we weren't following the system uh, that was being introduced in England. Can he provide more information on that um, and if there are any other reasons why we're not looking at that system? Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, my answer, previous answer was rather long, but to supplement that, uh, Presiding Officer, I can say that if we were to move to a, a 10 mile CPH rule, it would create more complexity and upheaval it would be no use to the 65% of keepers that use the CTS links, which are within five miles of the main holdings, nor will it be of any use to those island cattle keepers who send animals away to the mainland for away wintering. John Scott, to be followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I begin by thanking the Cabinet Secretary for the advanced side of his statement and also the clear and interest as a beef and sheep farmer 
and I am pleased to note and welcome that the Cabinet Secretary is willing to be lenient in the enforcement of these new rules as they are introduced in 2017. However, the penalties that will be enforced for failure to register movements timorously after this grace and period is over are apparently excessive, particularly for genuine and inadvertent errors. As the purpose is not to punish anyone, will the Cabinet Secretary look again at the cross-compliance penalties, perhaps on a sliding scale relative to time, and will he again reassure Scotland's farmers that genuine errors will not be unduly punished? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, I think Mr Scott raises a, a very reasonable point, uh, and uh, I'm glad that he appreciates the fact that we have uh, adopted a soft landing approach where we have shown that we, want, we do not want to introduce a punitive regime. We want to introduce a successful, effective regime which further enhances Scotland's reputation uh, for producing quality livestock uh, and keeps us as free, so far as we possibly can, of disastrous outbreaks of disease which have caused so much damage, as Mr Carson quite rightly said, in relation to the past. Um, in relation to penalties, of course, a, I would love to see a penalty regime, and I have referred to it already of the disallowance, and I refer to the statistics already, which is a more proportionate, less punitive, less harsh, and less oppressive. And indeed, I, as he has, have taken up many, many individual cases over many years to seek to argue with uh, my predecessors that they should not be penalised. All too often, the upshot was that there is no, no alternative but to pursue the fines, if you like, as effectively prescribed in EU law. And I'm quite sure that the existence of that disproportionate penalty regime played a significant part in the thoughts of many people when they were casting in the farming community, when perhaps they were casting their votes in the referendum because it's a regime that very few of us, I think, in this chamber have ever sought to defend. So I will look, of course, to see if there is any wriggle room at all in relation to what happens after the first year is over, uh, and therefore the, the possibility of uh, disallowance is, exists. Uh, and I'm happy to work with Mr. Scott to see if there's any means whatsoever to mitigate the penalties which are set out in the regulations precisely for the reasons that he sets out. I did say I would take Colin Smith, so very briefly, Colin Smith. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. As someone who saw the, the devastating impact on communities in Dumfries and Galloway of the outbreak of foot and mouth in 2001, I, and more importantly, local farmers, fully understand the importance of robust traceability. But can I ask that the Cabinet Secretary how the Government will guarantee that no farmer whose animals have been moved more than four times around the same farm under linked holdings will be penalised at slaughter under the new system? <coughs> Secretary. Well, I, I can absolutely assure the member that we will take every possible step that we can to ensure that farmers are not penalised for any breach of rules uh, 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 harshly or in a fashion that is unduly oppressive. I hope I have made that clear in response to several questions. The approach we will take is to ensure the efficient operation of the scheme and not to uh, impose a penal regime. Thank you. That concludes our statement on protecting Scotland's livestock. And apologies to the members I was not able to call on. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 3229 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a business programme. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move the motion. Formally moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. I will put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 3229 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 3231 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a timetable on stage one for the Railway Policing Scotland Bill. Again, I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak button now. I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 3231. Moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. I put the question to the Chamber. The question is that we agree motion 3231. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau motion. And I ask Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 3233 on designation of a lead committee. And moved. That question will be put at decision time, to which we now come. And the question is that motion 3233 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on designation of a lead committee be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. 
That concludes decision time, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.